What is going on Babylonians? It's me Songs of Rays back with another Outriders video to bring to you and today we're going to be looking over the winners and the losers when it comes to the New Horizon patch change. Now obviously uh, Fortress was the main one that got itself amended and we're definitely going to be touching on that in this video as well uh, but it's important to know that uh, Anomaly Power builds had to kind of swap up what they were using. Now when it came to the, uh, the mod changes the majority of them got affected by the glo by the global cooldown for across all mods. So things like double, triple, moaning winds is no longer a thing, and that's absolutely fine. I, I'm I'm in the uh, the category of agreeing with that. I don't agree that uh, we should be able to have access to that many in the first place. Um, but it does free up a lot of other things to be able to. Act. And uh, it's interesting to see in the Outriders official Discord as well as uh, over on our Discord as well, uh, and as through my testing as well from, from how I've just been kind of playing my anomaly power builds. Uh, which ones are actually the best ones to be able to go for, which ones are the most reliable, uh, and which ones actually work on a consistent basis. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to touch on the ones that we uh, well, that obviously do well, and then we're going to sandwich in between every single other one. We're going to touch on one that we thought was going to do well, but actually hasn't done very well when we think about it. Uh, so let's get straight into the list. As always, make sure you like and subscribe, uh, and yeah, let's get right into it. Alright then, so I've popped into my Technomancer game, end game. obviously I should have every single one of the tier 3 mods unlocked uh, because we've used them in previous videos, and we're just going to quickly go over some of the mods that are obviously there, some of the ones that we've met, we touched on previously in a video before the New Horizon patch came out, and the ones that we thought were going to kind of succeed, uh, but then obviously all the buffs, all the global cooldowns, all that kind of thing is just factored into something else, so let's have a quick look. So the, the, the ones that are prominent, the ones that are foremost and centre right now, uh, are the two that I think really benefited the most from all of these changes, and that's Claymore Torrent and Ultimate Storm Whip. Um, obviously with the Fortress meaning that you're losing the extra 43% on your Moaning Winds, the, you're losing the extra 43% on your skills. If you ever need to be able to use a gun at all, uh, I'd highly recommend that you use these two mods because they're the quickest to be able to proc, they do the most damage, uh, and you don't have to rely on any kind of like reloading technique, you don't have to get up close, you can actually just rely on the gun and the mod itself. So. Personally, I think the Damascus offering has become like a top tier contender right now, but uh, that's just my personal opinion as well. So if we quickly shift over to the tier 3 mods, uh, I do think that a loser is the Embalmer's Rage, and uh, I thought it, it would have been like a, like a, like a, um, kind of like a dark horse that was going to really enter this race, and the fact that uh, we would be able to get some more killing shots from the, from our weapons and all that, um, and everything, every single thing would be a, crit a critical shot after that. I just, I've, I've, I had a feeling maybe that would have, but it just didn't really reach its potential. Um, I do think obviously it's quite good in critical shot builds, uh, but when it comes to the anomaly power, it just doesn't quite work out the way we want it to. So. It's definitely one to be able to still obviously keep in contention for firepower builds, but for the time being, it's just not going to get not quite cutting it. So that one pretty much is a loser out of that. Um, if we then quickly shift over to Kinetic Stomp, I do think this one's pretty decent, and I do think this one also makes up for the uh, the Moaning Winds kind of change. Um, obviously, Moaning Winds got a, got a buff, and we will be touching on that just in a second, but. Kinetic Stomp was very, very good for uh, just being able to beat up close, being able to just shoot one shot, trigger that shockwave uh, for the 5 meter radius, and then wait 4 seconds and obviously trigger it again. So um, it, it kind of is like a mini Moaning Winds in a way, uh, and you can use this with another one that we're going to be touching on very, very shortly. Uh, so you could actually use this in like a three way, so you could have Kinetic Stomp, Moaning Winds, and the third one, which we're going to touch on, which I'm pretty sure you already know of, uh, but we'll just grab that quite quickly. So I do think Kinetic Stomp is a potential winner. Not, not as much of a winner as some of the other mods that are on this list, but definitely a decent one at the very least. Now it's definitely worth pointing out that Kinetic Stomp did actually receive a buff in the latest patch, which uh, did see its damage increase by 34%, and I do, I do think this is what helps to be able to make up for the, uh, making it like a mini Moaning Winds in that kind of sense. So. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very nice buff overall. I do think the, the cooldown is a bit on the long side, uh, especially considering we've got Claymore Torrents and Ultimate Storm Whip that can easily make up that damage, but uh, you know, that's just me personally. But I do think it's, a, it's pretty balanced, and I do think it's probably in the best state it's going to be. Uh, if we quickly shift on to Sandstorm, I do think Sandstorm actually really benefited from this patch. Um, I'm, I'm not a fan of Sandstorm, but I know a lot of people are, and uh, it's, it's kind of twofold in a way, because the, the, burst, well, the burst rifle, which was the Heir to the Desert was originally treated as a double gun and didn't really see the damage potential of an, an actual burst AR um, and that it's now had that change so anyone that had the uh, the Heir to the Desert pre-patch will now notice that their firepower has dipped between around about the 40 to the 50k kind of firepower moment uh, for a level 50 uh, but any future ones that you do farm will now be correctly 
displayed with their damage figures, and those will be anywhere between the 75 to the 99.4k uh, kind of range as well. But Sandstorm is one that I see uh, a lot of people kind of gravitate towards, and it, even though it does kind of confuse me as to why that's the case, um, I'm, I'm just I'm still going to go off them, and that's clearly the fact that. Um, it's, it's kind of a popular mod. So Sunstorm also did kind of see a damage buff which was uh, increased by 42% and I do think that's also going to help uh, kind of aid into it. So the fact that the gun's now properly addressed and the mod has been increased uh, is definitely going to, if Sunstorm was viable before, it's definitely going to be more viable now. So Scrap Grenade and Grand Opening were going to be my my choices for like being really good in terms of being mods and being, being able to dish out the damage especially on some like one shot rifles uh, and they, they do really pair quite nicely together especially on like uh, I think it's the uh, the Morton Idola is able to deal a decent amount of damage using grand opening and that was that was always my kind of like backup go-to when it came to a Technomancer just because you're, you're, you're dealing that mod damage consistently while you wait for your bullets to ever come back now Scrap Grenade did see a little bit of a buff, uh, but Grand Opening was pretty much untouched. So uh, Scrap Grenade had a da damage increase of 17%, which now takes it over that of Grand Opening, as you can see. And I do think that's kind of balanced because Scrap Grenade is a lot harder to be able to uh, angle, to be able to arc right, uh, whereas Grand Opening you just have to land a shot and obviously you're dealing that mod damage. Um, so while I was expecting to see something for these two, they pretty much kind of were untouched and they're pretty much in the exact same position they were originally now they are kind of like off meta they are definitely choices that you can use uh, but i do feel like because they were untouched and everything else pretty much got buffed uh, then these kind of did lose out in the patch and i do think people are going to start gravitating away from these two and i do think that's a massive shame because grand opening is easily one of my favorite damage dealing mods uh, so I don't know, maybe there's a way we can kind of bring this back, but for the time being, unfortunately, I would say suggest that you stay away from these two and you gravitate towards some of the other lesser used mods that have now been buffed in this latest patch. If we then go from there and uh, we start looking at Fortress, because it makes sense for us to be able to touch on this right now rather than just leave it till the end. Um, Fortress obviously did get the massive change that we were all kind of informed of, but it wasn't to the extent of what we thought. So instead of it being five stacks, it's now up to three stacks. And I think everyone was against it and I, I, I think it was it, maybe we were a bit premature in that kind of sense and the reason why is because Fortress is very very nice in its current state. I know a lot of people were very boisterous and very don't touch my fortress or anything like that it's going to break the game etc etc but the change that they've put into this is really really balanced it's really well done um, and the reason why is because we were able to see our armor and our resistance go up uh, to be able to go all the way up to 30% in, in when you actually stack it up to three times and That allows for survivability and the name of the game in the current end game is Survivability you, you, you don't have to worry about the time you don't have to worry about completing an expedition in a certain time um, So it's almost like it shifted with the end game in a way so Fortress was really really good when it came to uh, Being able to complete in the timers. It was, it was really good to be able to complete just to be able to increase your DPS to actually reach the heights you needed to to be able to finish that end game as, as such. And now Fortress is, has matched the current end game, which is to be able to increase your resistance and your armor so you actually stay alive longer to be able to complete the expedition. So I, li I like what they've done. I think if we looked at it just purely on paper, Fortress would have been completely gone, trash, uh, just chucked straight in the bin and no one would ever touch on this. But it doesn't work as bad as we kind of expected and it's actually kind of easy to be able to proc um, the main thing to be able to focus on is the fact that you can only get your stack every 0.2 seconds um, so if you are using a full auto just keep in mind that not every single shot that you're going to be firing is going to be procking those stacks uh, and you're looking for a roundabout gun that's got 300 rpm or less for every single shot to be actually stacking that um, so just keep that in mind when you're going for that. But the 30% damage increase is notable. Um, you definitely want to be able to use this on certain skills. Uh, Devastators can definitely use this to a great extent. Uh, but when it comes to like Technomancers with their unending RPGs, unending miniguns and all that, it's not as good. So uh, it doesn't work for every build. And I think that's what makes it balanced and it's no longer uh, a must pick mod. In which case, I don't think it's a loser. I don't really feel like it's a winner either, but I, I just want you to bear in mind that, you know, it's definitely a mod that you can pick up and definitely get some work done.
So next up, we're going to talk about Moaning Winds, and Moaning Winds obviously did see a massive buff, which none of us were really expecting, which is very, very interesting. Now, obviously, Moaning Winds was paired with Fortress, uh, but Fortress only gave it a 43% damage increase, um, and the buff that it got from New Horizon was a uh, Moaning Winds got 60% additional damage, um, which is absolutely insane, and I don't think anyone was really calling for it, uh, but it just makes it that, like, uh, that long cooldown, that high burst damage kind of kind of mod now, and uh, it definitely still gets work done. I feel like the main reason that Moaning Winds is now a loser, though, is the fact of the uh, the global cooldowns. And obviously, everyone was pretty much running at least two Moaning Winds, maybe even three if they were sweepers swapping to their pistols. Uh, so if to go from uh, to, from three procs of that, which pretty much wiped out every single elite that you could possibly think of, to now just having the one that's just a bit more damaging, um, it's you know, it's it's kind of difficult to be able to uh, to to accept that they, it's a, it's a win even with that sixty percent damage boost. So, I do think Moaning Winds was purely targeted by the cooldown uh, global cooldown thing, um, and in which case I do have to consider it a loser. I don't consider Moaning Winds like the must uh, must pick, uh, kind of like a nominee power kind of build by uh, gun mod anymore. Uh, similar to like Fortress, I do think that the meta has shifted away from that, uh, but that doesn't mean that Moaning Winds is unusable, it definitely can be done, uh, and I would re recommend that you do, if you if you do have one around, still being able to use it, but it's going to work perfectly in tandem with another mod which we're going to save till the very end, so make sure you stick around for that one. Uh, in terms of everything else, we've got Shadow Comet, which was my first go-to. That was my instinct to be able to go for this. Uh, and it was for a shotgun that also had Fortress on. Uh, and the reason why we wanted to do that is because um, the Funeral Pyre won because I managed to get 99.3k firepower, which obviously is absolutely amazing. It's probably my highest roll I've ever, ever received as a, as, a, as, a, as a drop that's on the ground. Um, but the Comet that gets cooled down and the fact that you can cool down more than one Comet on every single... Uh, every single cooldown and obviously as, as long as you're only using a shotgun for that and um, it's also dealing aoe and i think it's the perfect way to be able to deal high single target high aoe being able to cool down more than one uh and the cooldowns you know it's a little bit on the slower side but it's it's not exactly like un unfeasible unmanageable or anything like that it's definitely still decent and it allows you to be able to consistently pump that dps out the only problem is that everything else just feels like it's better now when it comes to uh, or a little bit more reliable anyway when it comes to um, like better cooldowns, better damage and all that. If we compare what's currently showing on Shadow Comet to Claymore Torrent, Claymore Torrent doesn't need a shotgun. Claymore Torrent just needs one single shot to actually hit and then four blade, up to four blades can then come down and hit and strike enemies and it tracks them. And whereas the, the Comet relies on uh, one, that one hit calling down the comet and the enemies being within a 3.5 meter radius and claymore torrent has a better cooldown uh, slightly less damage uh, but a much better radius as well and I just feel like claymore torrent is just better overall and in no I never thought that would be the case I mean, at least in the previous meta it always used to be shadow comet for me and now it's a case that claymore torrent is pretty is just genuinely just better overall so in which case i'm gonna have to say that shadow comet is kind of a loser but only only slightly i do think it's it's a really good mod i would like to see it get a little bit of a buff at some point uh, maybe even if it was just dropped down to a two second cooldown but because claymore torrent has now overtaken it for me i have to say that shadow comet has kind of lost out on that and the last two I really wanted to touch on, the first of which is Strings of Gorse. Now, obviously, this did receive a buff uh, a month or so back, and this allowed uh, when you when you initially shot an enemy to then uh, cause chain lightning to be able to go around between five enemies in a 10 meter radius of the target and deal 207,000 electric damage to them. And this was on a two second cooldown, which is very, very nice, very, very short, and the damage is definitely respectable. The only problem with Strings of Gorse is when you come up against a single enemy. If you've killed out everything else that's in the level and you just have one elite that's just staring you down, Strings of Gorse does absolutely nothing. And I feel like that's the main reason why people are starting to gravitate away from Strings of Gorse. It was definitely a really good mod in the previous one with the with the DPS and all that kind of thing and the timer, uh, but in the current game, I, th I feel like people have re realized there is a limitation to strings, and as such, they've kind of started moving away to something that's a bit more reliable. Things like Claymore Torrent are able to in like instinctively do that damage, and it even does a little bit extra damage, but even if there's just one target there, they still get hit by the Claymore Torrent, it, it, whereas with strings, of course, they don't get it anymore, and it's, it's that 
procking that unreliability that kind of really costs it. Uh, so if you're going to be sacrificing a gun mod to something that can actually deal some damage, you're not going to have one where it it doesn't proc all the time and I do feel that's the reason why strings of course is technically a loser in this regard uh, it, like I said it used to be good it used to be something that was that, that people a lot of people actually gravitated towards and really really enjoyed but I feel like people have now realized that uh, it's just not the best it's just not feasible and there's definitely better mods out there so as such we're gonna say strings of course is a loser and then last but not least is pretty much the one that's on the tip of everyone's tongue. It's the one that's been talked about the most ever since the new Horizon patch notes got released and obviously everyone managed to dive into their game and that is Radiation Splash. Now really, it's another reload skill so obviously it pairs really really nicely with that of Moaning Winds uh, and obviously it's it just kind of is like another version of a mini one that also has a bit of utility on it. So if you, in case you don't know what Radiation Splash does, it's basically like a Moaning Wind, it inflicts a small explosion. It is definitely a smaller radius of that of Moaning Wind, so make sure that's something you keep in mind, but it also inflicts Vulnerable and it deals 368,000 points of damage to an enemy within a 5 meter radius. Has a shorter cooldown than Moaning Winds as well, but let's be honest, if you're working off the cooldown and your, your general muscle like muscle memory for when it comes to Moaning Winds, you're definitely going to be at home with Radiation Splash. Now that 208% damage increase is absolutely huge, and I don't think anyone was really calling for it or anyone was really expecting it, and I think that's just purely because people can fly have just noticed all right we're, we're sacrificing people's moaning winds here we're, we're, we're kind of decimating the fact that you can't use three of them anymore what can we do to be able to offset that and radiation splash is just going to fit that niche perfectly now the fact that you can inflict vulnerable with this mod as well and then you can swap over to a moaning winds and just trigger that means that you're doing an extra 15 percent damage on your moaning winds and it starts stacking uh, and it, it just works out very very nicely in that kind of regard what you could do if you really, really still wanted to stay with like reloading techniques, you can activate your radiation splash, swap over to your uh, your animoir or whatever you've got your moaning winds on, uh, fire a few shots, trigger the fortress, reload, and then you're obviously benefiting from the 15% vulnerable, the 30% for the uh, the fortress, and then obviously the extra 60% damage increase that moaning winds actually do receive in this current patch. And it's still a decent combo, uh, but the fat radiation splash just got so much love in this patch, it's almost like New Horizon was dedicated to it, and as such, it's going to be the all-time winner out of the whole of the patch. And there you have it, Babylonians. That's my my list for the winners and the losers when it comes to the mod changes that came with the New Horizon patch. Now, obviously, some of these are huge changes. Some of these actually mixed up the meta very, very nicely. And I've got to commend PCF for actually doing that. Um, the fact that we, we've got a global cooldown initially sounded like a bad thing, but it actually helps with build diversity. It definitely helps with actually picking up some of those other kind of gun mods that are just kind of like left on the, left on the side, never saw the light of day. Uh, it's definitely been way more interesting to be able to use um, that pretty much wraps up the video so thank you all so much for watching make sure you have liked and subscribed if you found any of this actually helpful or any of this useful um, as always th thank you so much to the uh, the B Babylonian family so obviously you'll see their names come up in the next few seconds but uh, it really does mean the world to us that you are supporting the channel and if you really want to join in and just get your name on one of our, at the end of every single one of our videos all you have to do is click that join button right next to the subscribe button and it starts at as little as 99p a month uh, so really Thank you all for so much for watching. As always, keep yourself safe, keep yourself well, and I'll see you all on that next video.